So the Apollo. I have been a fan of the show. It's Showtime at the Apollo for for years. I would watch it um, at home when I lived in Pittsburgh. And I knew the history. I knew the artists that graced that stage and the careers that they had. I know about the artists who were booed there and how uh, brutal that crowd can be. Um, but I loved it. And there was one evening when I watched the show and uh, when they rolled the credits, they gave an address for submissions to be on the show. So I said, fuck it. I, I'm going to, I'm going to send my demo to the Apollo. And I had recorded a demo, um, a dance demo. I did it in a studio in Pittsburgh. Um, I did a cover of Deborah Cox, uh, things just ain't the same. And a cover of Christine W's land of the living. Um, and I sent it and I was sending this demo to, uh, different dance companies across the country because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to, I wanted to sing dance music. It's, it's always been like the, such a passion for me. So I was sending this demo out and I sent it to the Apollo never in a million years thinking that I would hear anything. So weeks go by and I was out with my mother and at, at, my mother had caller ID. It was like the, the box by the phone and we were somewhere together. And when I came back, there were missed calls. And one of them was from a 212 area code. <laughs> now, <laughs> who the hell is calling the Walker residence in Canterbury, Pennsylvania from a 212 area code in New York? Say that city again, please. <laughs> and how about, what's the population? Uh, I have no idea, but it's a, it's a, it's a smaller town outside of Pittsburgh, like 20 minutes Southwest of Pittsburgh. Um, and who the fuck is calling us from New York? I knew, I knew, I knew it was them. I knew it. I knew it. And I was right. So I just called the number back and it was indeed showtime at the Apollo her name was Maxine Lewis, and she wanted me to come on the show. And I was great. She wanted me to sing Things Just Ain't the Same from Deborah Cox. And I said yes because I, I didn't want to offend anyone. I mean, you were calling me to be on the show, and that's what I sent you. But I knew that that wouldn't be the right song for a crowd at the Apollo. It, it just wouldn't. So I called her back and I asked her if I could sing Get Here from Olita Adams because I, I, I had always sung that song. I love that song. And I, I really felt like it would showcase me as a vocalist. So she said yes. I was so relieved. I was so relieved. So they scheduled the shows to be taped, but then there was an issue with the lighting union or something, something like that. I'm not quite, I don't remember. Um, so they had to reschedule them for the fall. So I went up and I had never been. I had only seen it on television and saw it in the movies uh, but I, I walked in to the Apollo and there were just pictures everywhere of all the people that have played there. Michael Jackson. And, I mean, just everyone. And it was so overwhelming. It was like... Legendary. It was like a rush of blood to the head. It was insane. And, you know, that I went in and I looked at the stage and I'm like, this is actually happening. And I turned around and I looked up at all the seats and it's 
it it's such a beautiful place and you it was like you felt spirits in there um and there was a security guard because I was sitting in one of the seats I was waiting uh to go to a rehearsal because it was a live band and we had to shorten the song so I was waiting to go to rehearsal and the security guard came up to me she was this fierce black girl and she said um are you performing in the show? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in one of them. And she said, uh, what, what do you do? And I said, I'm a singer. She said, Oh, great. Uh, what are, what are you going to sing? And I said, I'm doing, uh, get here from Alita Adams. And <laughs> she said, Oh, honey. <laughs> she said, listen, if you're going to sing a song that's done by a woman, you better bring it because this crowd will eat you alive. No pressure. All the pressure. So the rehearsal went really well. I was, I was very happy. They were very happy. Um, had to be back the next day early. And when I got there, the audience was already there. So they had to get there by eight or nine a.m., and they had intended on recording s six or seven shows that day. Well, there were technical issues. And that audience sat there from whenever they got there in the morning, 8 or 9 a.m. It was easily 5 or 6 p.m. before they started. They had some warm-up acts. They had some comedians that would come out. But by the time that they started to shoot the first show, the audience was fucking pissed. They were not happy people. They'd been there all day, and they're just starting. So they blow through one show, and they're like, okay, second show, get it together. And that was the one that I was in. So... The acts start how, to go on. How long have they been sitting there for eight hours? Would you oh say? yeah, from eight or nine a.m. and it was like five or six. They and and they were like I said, they were not happy people. So second show, get your shit together. Acts start to go on. There was a boy uh, that sang a Stevie Wonder song. I can't remember his name. It was really good though. And there was a slam poet. Her name was Stacy Ann Chin. I do remember her. She was great. And they're, they're ready for me. So I'm standing in the hallway and I'm freaking out. And Steve Harvey was the host, right? And I hear, ladies and gentlemen from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, please welcome Jason Walker. And I walk out. <laughs> and you would have thought that Satan walked out with his pitchfork. Because these people went bananas and not in a good way. And they cut all of this for the televised version. They didn't show any of this happening. These people went nuts. They were shouting things at me. Uh, Go home, white boy. Get off the stage. We don't want you here. Boo. It was, it, I mean, everybody. It was this, this raucous, just angry mob of people coming at me and Steve Harvey's, you know, trying to cool the situation down and people just, they weren't like, they weren't shutting up. And this went on for what seemed like forever, but it, it, it was a good couple of minutes. And that's a long time when you're on camera. That's a long time. Finally, he was just like, Y'all need to shut up and let this boy, give this boy a chance. And everybody, calmate, they all calmed, calmed down. And he put his armor, Steve Harvey put his arm around me and he said, listen, I've been where you are before. And just go over to that microphone and sing your heart out. And... To be honest, I wanted to leave. <laughs> I, I wanted to just 
slink away and act like this never happened. But I went over to the mic and the audience was, uh, they were, they were like a cat. They were ready to pounce. They just needed a reason. So I go over to the mic and I said, I'm either going to have this audience after I sing the first line or I'm never going to sing again. So I composed myself as best I could. I shut my eyes. The music started and I sang the first line. You can reach me by railway. And there was just a wind of change. I, I felt it. It was so strong. And I said, oh, okay, I'm good now. I'm and, not good. And I, I'm not good. You need to, you need to give me more lines. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to proceed just a little bit and then I'm going to, uh, uh, yeah. So I was, I was good. I felt good. I don't remember a lot of it because it was like I left my body. Um, but there was a woman in the front row. I don't remember her name, but she was up out of her seat and she had her hand in the air. She was just feeling it. Feeling, and I was, I was singing. I was giving all the notes. How care? How care? I need you right here, right now. I was doing all the things, and by the time the song was over, everybody was on their feet. I was, I just didn't want to get booed, so I made it through, and I was. That's I was content. I was content. I was so happy and I had turned everybody's, I, I had turned it around. Um, there were a couple more acts and then they put us, they took us back out. They were going to pick the winner. So there's no way, there's no way that, that this is going to happen. And I, and I wasn't expecting it, but I won. The lady came out fiercely. I can't remember her name. She came out and she, she put her hand over you know, each contestant's head and the audience would, based on their applause and reaction, would determine the winner. So they came to me and the place just exploded and I couldn't believe it. And I won at the Apollo in New York City, first time, by the grace of God. And I don't know how that happened. But it was. Did you lose it? I did. Like, I honestly, can you take me to that moment? Can you really take me to the moment where they literally, this is a crowd that booed you. Yeah. And now we're celebrating you. For me, in that moment, I, I honestly, I couldn't. It was like an out of body experience. It really was. And I was just so blown away that it was even happening and I got a taste of what that is and it was addictive it was a drug to me I I, I needed I needed to have more of that I wanted I wanted that in my life and if I could do this if I could survive the most brutal audience on earth. I might be able to do this. Did Steve come back over to you and say anything? He did. You? He did. He gave me a big hug. He congratulated me. He was, he probably wouldn't remember me from a can of paint, but I remember him and I remember what he said. And it stuck with me all these years later. But that was the catalyst for me getting my ass out of Pittsburgh.